10 thumbs down on a video where I say I'm fighting against autism. One in 40, huh? And 10 thumbs down for saying I'm going to try to get answers and I'm going to try to make a difference in fighting autism, huh? One in 40 U.S. kids, one in 40, and I got 10 thumbs down because people apparently just didn't like the way I said things. And they're going to thumb my videos down. Well, guess what? Ain't going to stop me. Don't give a shit. Up your ass. Every one of you. It's amazing. I'm out here. That goes to show who's really on YouTube, right? 22 thumbs up. That's great. 10 thumbs down. That's a lot of shit, but it's way too many, and I love it. I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. That shows exactly what I think, that there ain't nothing but a bunch of demons on YouTube for the most part. A third of the, all of internet traffic is, is YouTube, supposedly, and I bet you 90% of that third, of a third of all internet traffic that's on YouTube, 90% are shills, demons, whatever you want to call them, because here we are. I ain't done, been nothing but, for the most part, ridiculed so hardcore in my seven years almost now on YouTube, and I ain't said nothing wrong ever since I've been on here. And I'm going to quit saying that I'm right because it's not really true. I'm just saying what's true. Like right now I'm looking outside. The sun's out. So if I go up to a stranger and I say the sun's out, the sun is out today, am I right? Or is that just the way things are? It's just the way things are. So once again, I'm telling the truth. When this, what, we ha what happened is that we were cut off. We were separated and we are carrying a generational trauma passed down, carried down for thousands and thousands. Who knows? How long? This all stems from an event, from a, a cataclysm from a long, 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 long time ago. And that's why we're all nuts and ape shit. And that's why we're all trying to fill a hole, whether it's food, whether it's drugs, whether it's sex. It's all because we've been cut off. That is why death carries a, gr a, a grim, the grim reaper death carries a sickle, carries a scythe, a scythe, excuse me. It's because we are cut off. It's a representation that we are cut off. We are separated. The Bible itself even says that we were placed in the Garden of Eden on earth, that we were not made here, that we were placed here. So even in Genesis, it's Genesis itself, it says that we are separated from something, from the source. And that's what the whole thing is. The one world order, right? They're trying to bring, but they're telling, they split the atom. They split it, separated. Yes, yes. So they're trying to bring everything back into one, right? So here we are. This is why we are the way we are. We are cut off from our family, not God. God is a name on the back of a dollar bill. Your family, your mother, your father, your brothers and sisters. It's real simple. Sorry you don't like my tone. Sorry. Real sorry. Actually, you know what? I'm not. Show it up your ass. Can we really inherit trauma? Headlines suggest that the epigenetic marks of trauma can be passed from one generation to the next, but the evidence, at least in humans, is circumstantial at best. Okay, we'll talk about that in just a second. In mid-October, researchers in California published a study of Civil War prisoners that came to a remarkable conclusion. Male tr children of abused war prisoners were about 10% more likely to die than their peers were, get, were in any given year after middle age, the study reported. The findings the authors concluded supported an epigenetic explanation. The idea is that trauma can leave a chemical mark on a person's genes, which then is passed down to subsequent generations. That mark doesn't directly damage the gene. There's no mutation. Instead, it alters the mechanism by which the gene is converted into functioning proteins or expressed. The alteration isn't genetic. It's epigenetic. The field of epigenetics gained momentum about a decade ago. When scientists reported that children who were exposed in the womb to the deer, or excuse me, in, to the Dutch hunger winter, a period of famine toward the end of World War II, carried a particular chemical mark or epigenetic signature on one of their genes. The researchers later linked that finding to differences in the children's health later in life, including higher than average body mass. So inside these wombs, these kids, these ba unborn babies were like, man, everybody's starving. I can feel it. I can sense it. So that means I need to pack on the pounds. I need to do that. It's right here. Somehow they knew. Just like all these kids that come out and they can work these tablets and these, you, you have, would not, every damn day, I'm with a family member or a parent. They talk about how their two, three-year-old can run through these electronic devices better than they can. Because this has been proven in the hundredth monthly, monkey effect anyway. We are, are all connected in consciousness. We all know, we all feel. That's why you can watch America's Funniest Videos and someone who see, sees someone get hit in the nuts, I look away because I can't take it. Or people wince or they go, ooh, it's because you can feel it. You didn't happen to you, but you know what it feels like because we're all connected. And this study, 
tells you right here on top of the hundredth monkey effect. This is why the Bible tells you the kingdom is within because the answers are inside. The details and the evidence is outside, but the answers are within. <clears throat> You're never going to go to a .gov, a .edu. You're never going to go to the government websites or the NASA websites or any of those websites where they'll tell you, yes, we put predictive programming into things. We tell you in our media stuff that's going to happen beforehand. Or yes, there really is a God because all, or, excuse me, I used the wrong word, but I'm just trying to say what they're trying to say. They're trying to de deceive you by even saying that. But instead of saying you're cut off from your family and it was your family that created all the stuff that you're all part of because everything is so perfected here and in such creative perfection that is a mathematical impossibility for all of these things to be in such perfect order. So you'll never find the outside telling you that your father and mother and, and family is real and that this place is a matrix. They'll tell you that shit in Hollywood and they'll tell you that in the external mov movies and books and TVs and speeches and lectures and classes and all that shit, but they'll never tell you that, yes, it's fact. You have to do that. That comes from inside. The first word of the Bible, in. In the beginning because the kingdom is within. The answers are within. It's a lot of it has to do with the memory, which is inside your blood. That's why the blood is important. You don't want to spill the blood. It's because you lose what is, when you, when you spill the blood, you lose what's in it. That's why the blood is for this life. The spirit is for the next. The excitement since then has only intensified generating more studies. Of the descendants of Holocaust survivors, I don't care about that. But behind the scenes, the work has touched off a bitter dispute among researchers that could stunt the enterprise in its infancy. Right here is what we want to focus on. Critics contend that the biology implied by such studies simply is not plausible. Epigenetics researchers counter that their evidence is solid even if the biology is not worked out. Critics contend that the biology implied by these studies is not plausible. Now, let's talk about this. No black holes exist, says Stephen Hawking. At least not like we think. This is from National Geographic. Black holes do not exist, at least not as we know them, says renowned physicist and Nobel Prize winner. Yes, big, brilliant, super genius guy. We all love him. Oh, he's so brilliant. Well, used to love him. That's all sarcasm. I don't put anybody on a pedestal. I don't idolize anyone. All right, so don't try. Oh, you love that guy. <laughs> Potentially provoking a rethink of one space most mysterious objects. A new study from Hawking also says that black holes may not possess firewalls, destructive belts of radiation that some researchers have proposed would incinerate anything that passes through them, but other scientists deem them an impossibility. The conventional, this, pay attention right here, the conventional view of black holes posits that their gravitational pull is so powerful that nothing can escape them, not even light, which is why they're called black holes. The boundary past which there is supposedly no return is known as the event horizon. So this tells you, light comes from the dark, right? It's the same thing. The dark is just the light casting a shadow. In this conception, all information about anything that ventures past a black hole's event horizon is destroyed. On the other hand, quantum physics, the, be the best description so far how the universe behaves on a, excuse me, on a subatomic level suggests that information cannot ever be destroyed, leading to a fundamental conflict in theory. So what they're saying is that what Stephen Hawking says and his theories are completely conflicting with known accepted fundamental science. So isn't it amazing? They say, oh, well, this whole trauma is passed down. It's, uh, it's, doesn't, it's simply not plausible. Well, neither is anything that Stephen Hawking says, but y'all suck that guy's dick. That's what you did. So you can't have it both ways. It's because you're not going to come out and tell us that we're carrying this burden, this trauma. This whole place is magnetism. That means this shit stuck to you when it happened. All right? That's what, that's what happened. And the, even, even Elon Musk, we're going to go to Mars. We're going to go to Mars. How are you going to do that? You haven't even talked about kickstart. How are you going to kickstart the atmosphere? It doesn't have a core, according to you guys, like the Earth does. That's why that you can't live on that place because it doesn't have a magnetosphere. But you never, ever, ever hear that guy talk about how you're going to kickstart the atmosphere. It's all bullshit. And then on top of it all, the double standard hypocrisy that's bigger than anything in the whole world is he got this guy. I wasn't there. Could have been tobacco. I don't know. But the official narrative and the story is he's even being investigated for it. Is he got Elon Musk on a freaking podcast smoking a blunt? 
I was in the military. You couldn't get a security code, a security clearance, if you had like stuff that happened to your past years ago. Here's a guy who goes, goes on top secret clearance and stuff on military bases, is launching rockets into the very heavily government controlled airspace, and he's smoking dope. He should be gone immediately. I was a administrative secretary in the military. I kick, I wrote up the paperwork that kicked people out all the time. You were doing drugs when you were on leave. You're gone. No trial. No nothing. You're gone. You're done. This dude smoking a blunt, <laughs> and a week later is going to be launching a rocket on a military base. You all are nuts. You're nuts. Okay. You're nuts. Thanks to my subscribers and the people who understand. Who I'm calling nuts. Fuck you.